Now that you've got your code in your account, you've got your credit set up, the next thing we need to do is to create an AWS instance using our machine image that I created for you. So we're going to go ahead and log in at aws.amazon.com. Once you've logged in, you need to make sure that your computer is set to be either in Ohio or Oregon. At the moment, those are the only two locations where we have the AMI images up. If you want to have the AMI images at other locations, let me know, send me an email, and I'll copy them over to other places. But at the moment, they're only available at Ohio or Oregon. And so if you're trying to go through this and you can't find the SDSU AMI images, that's why. They're not everywhere. So once you've made sure that you're at Ohio, um, go ahead and click the EC2 link that will open up the EC2 dashboard, which will show that you don't have any running instances, that you don't have any images yet, and so on. So the very first thing we want to do is create an instance. So we're going to create the instance by clicking the Launch Instance button. And then um, we're going to search for the AMI that I made for you. So that AMI is under Community AMIs. And so you can go ahead and click the Community AMI button. And then in the search box, enter SDSU. And you should see two images under SDSU. There should be the Computational Genomics 2018 Micro V1 and the Computational Genomics 2018. As I mentioned previously, the Micro version is guaranteed to run on the T2 Micro machines. So let's go ahead and select that one to start with. It's a 64-bit machine. That just means it's using lots of bits. And so we'll select that one, and we'll double check that we're using the T2 Micro. And note that there's that green button that says that it's free tier eligible. That means that we're not going to pay for it. That's a good thing. Even though we've got an educational allotment, we don't necessarily want to burn through a bunch of our allotment um, until we're comfortable doing things or until we need to use a lot more compute resources. Don't worry. We'll get there during the semester. You're going to have to use a lot of resources. So we can just click Review and Launch. That gives us an overview page of um, all of the things that we need to, to think about. And then once we click Launch, Amazon will ask us for our SSH keys. Now at this point, since this is the first image that you've launched, you likely don't have any SSH keys installed in Amazon. And so at this point, you can go ahead and say Create New SSH keys. And you need to download the file, the, the secret file, and you need to confirm to AWS that you have access to that file. Without that secret file, you can't access the AWS instance that you've launched. In a separate video, I'll explain exactly how SSH keys work. And so take a look at that. Um, and hopefully that'll explain a little bit more about what's going on. Finally, click Launch Instance. And then um, you'll see a summary page that says your instance is launching. You can go ahead and view your instances. And finally, you see a summary of the instance. It takes about a minute to three minutes, maybe five minutes sometimes if there's a lot of load on the system for the server to boot up, and it will say initializing. It will tell you that it's going through some checks, building the network, starting the connections. And basically what it's doing is it's taking that machine image that I created for you, and it's converting that into a virtual machine and booting that up. So it's kind of like waiting for your Windows machine to boot up or your Mac machine to boot up that first time you press the power button. It just takes a few minutes for everything to come working. Finally, when it says you've got uh, two out of two status checks running, and you've got an IP address. Now you can go ahead and access your machine using SSH with that private key that you downloaded.